to Fenwick High School Gymnasium in Oak Park, Illinois, where tonight Fenwick will be hosting De La Salle and a big Catholic Conference battle, and we're happy to bring it to you as our prep game of the week. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Bill Hazen, and Bob, I'm quite right saying Bob Holbrook here tonight. They will be hanging from the rafters quite literally. This is almost a scene that's reminiscent of the film Hoosiers, where they played in gyms like this all the time. This is great Catholic League basketball, Bill. This is the way the gyms used to be on the old days all oh, yeah. the time. Hanging from the rafters. There's even a TV crew downstairs. Some of the people who can't get in upstairs are going to be watching the game in the basement. Yeah, no, it's going to be terrific. There, there will be an overflow crowd tonight, and a lot of fans will be watching in the basement in a lunch area down there, so they'll be watching the game just as you're watching it right now. Now, tonight we're going to be seeing in De La Salle, a team that is 14-4 and four in the year. They feature a player by the name of Eddie Harvey, and he's having an outstanding senior season, Bob. Eddie Harvey is just like the rest of the De La Salle team, Bill. Nobody big on their team. They're all hard-nosed players, and Eddie Harvey leads the way with hustle, determination. He's probably the best athlete on the team and the high scorer. Watch for him to have a good ball game tonight. The most publicized player we'll be seeing on the floor tonight, of course, belongs to Fenwick, and that's Corey McGetty, number 50. He has had an unbelievable season, and we know how highly recruited he was. Well, when your top two choices end up being Kansas and Duke, and you select <laughs> Kansas, Bill, that says something right there. Corey McGetty is just hard to guard. You put a big guy on him, he takes him outside and goes around with him. A little guy, he takes him down low and post up. Great all-around athlete. Bob, we're going to see in De La Salle a team that just because they do not have a player the caliber of a highly publicized Corey McGetty, they'll be at a disadvantage, probably an underdog tonight. What do they need to do in order to win here? I think the key for De La Salle tonight is really to do a real good job of offensive execution, Bill. You've got to keep Fenwick on the defense. You can't give them a lot of possessions. Possibly create some turnovers by putting a little press or pressure defense on them. And then how do you handle McGetty? I don't even know the answer to that one myself. I see in a lot of teams cry different things. It's going to be interesting to see what De La Salle does tonight to try to handle this guy averaging about 27 a game. Oh, yeah, he's incredible. We've heard so much talk about him that it's easy to forget that Fenwick has a very balanced basketball team. Certainly, Corey McGetty is not their only star. No, he's not, and they have a lot of weapons, Bill, and they use them very well. I think they possibly have four Division One players, three beside McGetty, they are going to start tonight. Chris Williams, who's already going to Loyola, Gilmore, and the junior, Jabari Harris, yes. three tough basketball players, along with the football player, Tim Doolin, who's outstanding himself also. Aside from that, look for them to go down low, Bill. They're going to use their height to their advantage, and in a tremendous atmosphere like this, the home court means so much. Defend that home court advantage tonight. Don't lose at home. This is really what high school basketball is all about. Stay tuned. We'll have the play-by-play -play for you coming up next on our Prep Game of the Week. Remember when doctors made house calls? Today, medicine is a lot more complicated. Now it's CT scans, MRIs, and other sophisticated tests. So how do you begin to keep up? With Mayo Clinic's award-winning monthly newsletter, you get facts that can calm your fears, facts that can open your eyes, facts that can help you ask your doctor the right questions. Every month, the Mayo Clinic Health Letter informs hundreds of thousands of readers. To subscribe, just call this toll-free number. Do it now and you'll also get three bonus medical reports and a yearly index, plus this handy bonus binder. You'll even receive Stretching Your Health Care Dollars as a free gift. Call 800-356-3891 to get 12 monthly issues plus medical reports, index binder, and free booklet, all for just $24. Use your credit card or we'll bill you in three easy payments. Call 800-356-3891 now. That's the thing about Brown's, it tastes better. If Brown's chicken is what you crave, now's the time to come in and save. Right now, for just $8.99, enjoy eight big pieces of crispy Brown's chicken in any large side order. Try one of our new ones, like Caesar salad, broccoli and cheese, green spinach, or hot cinnamon apples. Mm-hmm, <laughs> just $8.99. That's the thing about Brown's, it tastes better. Chicago sports fans are known across the country for their savvy. What's the primary source of that savvy? The savviest sports writing team in Chicago, the staff of the Chicago Sun-Times sports section. It's a team that writes with style and substance. A team that doesn't just cover, but uncovers, too. A team that's concise, precise, and feisty. Come on now, get savvy. Get hold of the Sun-Times today. 
Welcome back here at courtside in Oak Park. And you see the story right here. Two very good, solid teams having good seasons. The Friars. We're here to see whether they can get that done tonight against a powerful Fenwick team. Let's take a look at the starters tonight. And we have some very talented players. De La Salle. Look for Harvey, who is their leading scorer. Grant, who is their leading rebounder at 11 a game at just 6-3. Boy, what a rebounder he is. This is a small but very quick team. Now Fenwick will counter with uh, Corey Maggetti, of course, and uh, Jabari Harris, who played so well. Chris Williams having a marvelous season. He is headed to Loyola. There could be four Division I NCAA basketball starters in there. And away we go with a tip that gets this game underway. Tonight's officials, it's the real O'Neill right here. Dan and Tom and Rick. And away we go. So we are underway tonight. Corey Maggetti feels the ball for the first time. He's used to playing in these very tight confines. Look at how close we are and uh, just how close everybody is to the action from the baseline. It's knocked down Chris Williams. Puts Fenwick on the board with the first two points of the game. It is two to nothing. And across the timeline, Marvin Groves will bring it into the forecourt. So, De La Salle goes on the attack. Groves gets the ball back. Feeds it on the cut. Harvey and shot blocked out of there. Jabari Harris was up there where the air was rare. fans everywhere there is no place they're in the end zones not only are they up above us every seat is taken they're below us about 30 feet below us in the lunchroom which is packed and they're watching on a projection tv a badly missed shot by bell tipped to the end line out of bounds bill our older fans people like you and i <laughs> will remember the fenwick lightweight tournament that used to take place here every december in the days of the old catholic league lightweight tournament and this is the atmosphere that I remember it being packed in here for some good okay. five, nine and under basketball. Here's Jabari Harris to the left hand. McGetty follows it and puts it in. Corey McGetty with his first two. Such a difference in size out there, Bill. Uh, Fenwick is a much taller team than De La Salle. At every, just about every position, they certainly have a great advantage on the boards. McGetty is listed at 6'6", but he looks a lot taller. The ball is flipped up in traffic, knocked away. De La Salle gets it. Jump shot won't go down for Harvey and ripped out of there. Here's Friars on a run out. The drive foul on a rakedown as Henry Grant picked up his first, trying to stop the drive. When you have that kind of height on the floor, Bill, that's what triggers your fast break. I mean, D, uh, Fenwick is so much taller, they should own the boards tonight, and that's going to trigger their running game with a quick outlet pass anytime De La Salle misses. That's why it's so important for De La Salle to spend some time on offense and take a good shot. All right, that first foul shot goes in for Quentin Gilmore. Gilmore last year was playing at St. Joseph's. He was playing for Gene Pingator, and he uh, had a cousin who played here at Fenwick. Decided he wanted to transfer, and boy, he's blossomed into just a great senior season. He's been tremendous. That lead is up to six to nothing. They gave that foul, by the way, to Marvin Groves, who fouled from the back. On the attack, Martez Davis gets a pass out front. Groves trying to penetrate, goes into a grove of big guys and feeds it off, and they got the roll in. Henry Grant gets his first two. It took almost two minutes for uh, them to score. Great block shot by Davis as he stoned the layup attempt. On the drive, the follows tipped in after the miss. It was uh, Courtney, Courtney Bell. Was Bell. There on that he got it, and that cuts it to six and four. This is a game that's going to be played at rim level. These guys get up real well. Maggetti leaning in. Oh, what a move off of the glass. He just overpowers some of the smaller De La Salle guards when he takes that ball to the hoop like that. They list McGetty at 6'6", but I'll say again, I think he looks taller than that. He looks almost 6'8", and he has that huge wingspan to go with it. Pocket pick. It's a drive out, and, and that was tipped. That counts. Well, that basket counts for uh, Quentin Gilmore. He has four. I don't think that ball would have gone in, Bob. I think he got offensive goaltending on that call. It was a, uh, a Fenwick guy that no, that wasn't a... Oh, you're right. They wiped the basket off. You're right. It was a Fenwick player. It was offensive goaltending. Wipe off the basket for Gilmore. Missed time on the jump. 
Ball almost stripped away. He comes back. Drive to the hoop. A block on Davis as he tried to put the ball up. He got a foul in there. Looked like big Jabari Harris was there, number 40. And he picked it up. That's his first personal foul. And the team's first. Bill, sometimes uh, Fenwick has started or played Tulin a lot tonight. Sean Tulin, the quarterback of the football team. But with Shannon yes. out there starting at 6'6", that gives him even a bigger presence on the floor down there. Really a big basketball team. Martez Davis to the line. Puts it in with the left hand. He's a 65% foul shooter. He's one of those guys, and how many times have we seen great, great players who you didn't, I think of Austin Carr at Notre Dame, you'd look after a game and think he did nothing all game, and then you'd look and he hit you with a 35-point game, a very quiet game, and that's the way Martez Davis plays. But boy, he's a good player. Little token pressure here, trying to have Fenwick take a little bit of clock off before they get into their offense. Again, he was fouled as Gross tried to get over and anticipate, trying to squeeze the double team on the drive. Second personal foul, second team foul. We'll take a moment to remind you that tonight's game is brought to us in part by Ganella Baking Company. We bake the difference since 1886. G O double N E double -L, L A. That's how you spell good. In the forecourt, ball goes underneath Chris Williams. The fade away. What a block by Martez Davis. He blocked it right off of his hand. De La Salle's got some small players, Bill, but as you see in the black here, they all play much taller than they are. At 6'2 or 3, they're both about, their verticals get them about an inch higher in height. Maggetti with the long jumpers, we return live. Jabari Harris tried to shield his body so he could put it up, and I think Martez Davis got the foul. He was in the area. We'll see. They did indeed give it to Davis. That's his first and the team's third. And that puts Jabari Harris on the line. Harris is not an outstanding foul shooter. Bill, for the high school basketball fans watching tonight, if it looks like the officials are all over the court, they are. There's one extra one out there. There are there really are two O'Neills on the floor and not just oh, yeah. uh, one tonight. Uh, what uh, this is, they're, they're getting ready for the state tournament by experimenting with three-man crews because once you get downstate, it's going to be all three-man crews and there's going to be a free, uh, a free a clinic, officiating clinic for three-person basketball officiant officiating at Marist High School on Thursday, February 19th. Foul call on the drive. And we'll see how this works out. We'll see a substitute coming in. Corey Maggetti's going to go to the bench here. They gave the foul to uh, Maggetti, his first, and the team's second. So Maggetti gets a breather. Inbound pass. Meteors, a three-pointer on the way, and it's knocked down by Eddie uh, uh, Harvey. He puts it in, and that was Swella, fella, as good as Ganella Bread. Here's a shot blocked out of there by Jabari Harris uh, on the driver. It was it? Uh, it was uh, Grant Henry Grant who got a hand on that and knocked it out of there. This is what I mean by playing taller. Watch this guy get up at six foot three. Henry Grant just comes over, times his leap perfectly. He's way above the backboard oh, on that goodness. one. Yeah, he has to shield himself so he doesn't hit his head on the backboard. Ball stolen away on the inbounds pass. De La Salle has it on the drive. And a score for Harvey. He has a five-point quarter going. And De La Salle with its first lead of the game. At 11 to 9. In the forecourt, the Friars with it. They have gone to their bench a little bit. Foul on Mike Shannon, the senior who came in. Or uh, Mike was the player who was fouled. This should be a common foul situation as Shannon was trying to dribble the ball a little bit. John Quinn looks very relaxed on the bench over there, Bill, like he doesn't have a worry in the world early <laughs> in the ball game. I like to be able to sit like that when I was coaching. Oh, yes. Matt Bohenick is in the lineup now for De La Salle. He's seeing his first action. Shannon with it. Bohenick is on him, the two new players. Shannon, oh, a nice move by Mike Shannon. His first two as he spun around. 
and ties the game at 11. Three and a half minutes to go first quarter. Bill Hazen, Bob Hallberg, happy to have you with us. This is the prep game of the week coming your way on Channel 38. We have a turnover. Let's go down to Dan Richmond, who joins us tonight. Good evening, Dan. How are you? Bill and Jim, the last couple minutes, T. LaSalle has been doing a great job defensively. The reason being, Coach Tom White has wanted his weak side players to double team and collapse down low. He's really stressing help defense and having his team play smart. Mark, back to you. Well, with 3.06 remaining, first quarter of play. Left-handed drive up and in for Chris Williams. He has a four-point first quarter. And in the forecourt, a long jumper on the way as Grant tried to, Carby, or Harvey tried to uh, follow up on it. There was a foul on the rebound. So a foul was called. And we'll see what happens there. We'll take a moment to remind you about Insure One. Would you like to save on your insurance premiums as much as 20%? You can do so by calling 1-800-INSURED. It's Insure One, the insurance superstore. As we return live, a shot attempt did not go down. Chris Williams, by the way, has picked up a foul, his first of the game. Team's third. Fenwick on the attack as they've gone a little bit into their bench now. They have Stuart Glenn in the lineup, and they like this young man, a junior. Here's Chris Williams taking it over. Chris Williams with a six-point first quarter. Boy, he looks awfully good tonight. Extremely fast-paced game, Bill. Both teams are getting the ball inbounds quickly, coming down and not wasting a lot of time on offense, getting, you know, getting a shot up there quickly. All right, in the forecourt, it's Davis on the attack. Drive to the baseline. The ball is passed off of the left hand. Didn't go tipped in by Bo Hennick. Matt Bo Hennick with his first two. 6'5", 195. And boy, he's been playing so well the last couple of weeks for De La Salle. He's really come into his own. Williams bails out. Gets it over to Shannon. Shannon driving. Blocked by Bo Hennick. Got two real good players going toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, Bob. Uh, the two big fellas going right at each other. Oh, yeah. Using a little muscle on each other. And uh, Shannon's going to come out. And that puts uh, Jabari Harris back in the lineup. Along with Stewart Glenn. Harris gets the ball to the left hand up and in. Jabari Harris has three first quarter points. And the lead is back up to four for the Fenwick Friars. The LaSalle on the attack. Driving to the basket for the score. Good, dri good drive to the basket, but Fenwick was a little low, uh, slow adjusting on the weak side. As you see, he gets around on the outside, but nobody really comes over and gets good help. Matter of fact, a couple of the basketball players on Fenwick had their back turned to the basketball, Bill. One thing when you're playing defense on the weak side of the floor, you always have uh, one eye on the, uh, on the ball when it's coming toward you. All right, and a three-point conversion there. As he puts it in. 17 to 16, it's a one-point ball game. A minute 17 to go first quarter. Real good aggressive defense by De La Salle, really pressuring the ball. From the top of the key, an air ball, missed and missed badly. The ball went out of bounds. And with a minute four remaining first quarter, De La Salle gets the ball back, and the De La Salle congregation was uh, yelling air ball on that one. For as many people as Fenwick has in the gym, it's kind of quiet at times, Bill. Well, you're right about that, but I have a feeling it won't be for long, Bob. We approach the end of the first quarter. Good drive in traffic to the left hand. Wouldn't go down uh, for Harvey. Eddie Harvey, who has a five-point first quarter going. Lead pass on the drive. Chris Williams didn't get it. Fight for the board. Shannon had it for a moment. It's a run out for De La Salle. On the drive. Tremendous basket underneath. So Harvey gets the basket. Battled him on the boards. Great job. Across the timeline, Gilmore feeds it for Chris Williams. Up and in. He has an eight point first quarter. We're approaching the end of the quarter. Oh, what a block by Jabari Harris. On the drive by Courtney Bell. 
was all over the place. This could be a wild game. This is going to be a wild game. You can see that already. Man. I like the tempo of this, Bill. When that ball goes through the basket, each team is inbounding the ball quickly. They're not letting it sit there, and they're coming right back and attacking the other team. Very fast-paced game. Deep inbounds pass. Harvey lets it go. It's short of the mark. Quarter over. But it was a good first quarter for both of these teams. And we are through one quarter of play here at Fenwick High School, where the Friars lead the Meteors 19 to 18. It's a spectacular website. Check it out. You want to be a part of it. 19 to 18. Through one quarter of play. Number 14 is Stephen Walker. They changed his uniform number. He was wearing number 30. He's now wearing number 14. He is a senior. Let's go downstairs to Dan Richmond once again. Dan? Bill and Jim, Fenwick's Chris Williams, who's taking a break right now, converted on three gorgeous moves to the basket. Why is Williams showing such new acrobatics? Maybe it's because he's sporting a fresh new ball haircut, a la Michael Jordan. Back to you. <laughs> he catches those little details very, very vital. Yeah, the ball look is in. No doubt about it. And uh, <laughs> you're right, De La Salle gets it on the attack. They can take the lead with a basket. Grant with it. Grant and Harvey are the two guys that kind of fuel this attack, but they're not the only good players that De La Salle has. Here's a run out. Maggette driving. Foul. He'll have to earn them from the line as Martez Davis gets the foul, the team's fifth. Advantage for Fenwick being so tall, they certainly got the, you know, able to have a tremendous advantage on the boards, but guarding De La Salle at the other end, it's like five little guards running around out there. Oh, yeah. I don't think the big players on Fenwick are that used to guarding such small, quick people on the perimeter. You see that the, uh, on this drive here, that uh, F uh, McGetty showed his ability to put the ball on the floor, that's for sure, he can do it. Well, he can, he's so hard to stop, though, because he can go inside and kill you. I've seen teams try to match up on him in different ways. I've seen him put smaller guys on him. He goes on and post them. They put a big guy on him, which De La Salle doesn't have too many big guys here. The taller guys that guard him, he takes them right out on the perimeter and just kind of plays with them, shoots the jump shot if they back off and drives right around them if they get on him tight. McGetty missed them both. We may not see that again this year. As McGetty failed to drop either foul shot, and so that uh, holds the lead at 19 to 18 for Fenwick. Ball stolen away. Tulin on the drive. Goes, missed it. It was almost, uh, McGetty was almost up there high enough to pull it in. Wasn't able to do so. Grant with the ball. Feeds it across. Harvey for three. Missed it. And the rebound comes out. Quentin Gilmore. The lob. McGetty off of his hands. He had to keep it alive. And did he hit the end line? I think he did. The ball went out of bounds. Here we see a beautiful lob pass to McGetty coming down the side, right over the top of the rim. Now, look at this athletic ability, Bill. He misses the shot, comes around the rim on the other side, and grabs his own rebound. Now, he's, a, he's an incredible player. There's little doubt of that. Bohannon blocks the, uh, or Shannon blocked the shot there on the drive and a very good job. Sneed Dedrick is in the lineup and he had his shot block. Out of bounds. Sneed Dedrick's been playing a lot for De La Salle and been playing very well. Good solid score off the bench. It gives him a good lift. Many years ago, I coached a player at Chicago State named Henry Dedrick and that looks like it could be a son out there. Yeah, you could well be right. It was tipped in. I'm not sure who they gave it to. I think it was uh, McGetty or maybe Chris. Wi I thought Chris Williams tipped it in. I'm going to give it to him. He is 10. So Chris Williams with the tip. Getting it downstairs. And as uh, Bo Hennick pins his ears back, he drew the foul on Mike Shannon. And Shannon picks up his first, and that's the team's fifth. We'll remind you that this is a wonderful program. Blue bag recycling for the city of Chicago. Chicago has it in the bag. Make sure you're participating in the blue bag program. Right at the foul line, Bo Hennick. He had a nice post-up move down there low. Uh, Billy caught Shannon playing right behind him in the post area. 
once you get the ball down low, you just about have to foul a person. I think they've got to do a better job of denying the ball before it gets in so close to the basket. And Bohenek now has four points on the night. He came in averaging six. He has come off the bench. He's definitely given them a spark. And a good job. A good job for the Meteors, who trail by a point. Good move to the hoop by Gilmore. Didn't get it. Chris Williams underneath. Beautiful. Good spinning layup there. Beautiful pass to Gilmore underneath. Great, great set of guards out there in Williams and Gilmore. Ball stolen away. McGetty driving and rim wrecking it. Six points for McGetty. Largest lead of the game at five. It ties the largest lead of the game. Timeout at 5.13 of the second quarter. And the fans have come to their feet here. I can see why uh, Duke is pretty excited to have a ball player like this. Beautiful oh, yeah. slam dunk. A good timeout by De La Salle there. That was a smart timeout. The little momentum there. Crowd got into it on the slam dunk. Coach White wanted to get his players on the side and settle them down with. Let's go down to Dan Richmond. Dan. Guys, that great slam dunk by Corey Maggetti was amazing, but was even more amazing was the intense look that he gave Marvin Groves of De La Salle, who Maggetti dunked over. Does this mean it's now going to be Maggetti time? We shall see. Well, you're right about that. And you know what? He pulled it back a little bit. He kind of faked Groves into him and then wrapped it around him for the dunk. You've got to have some elevation to be able to do that. That was all my, always my favorite dunk. <laughs> That's the one I like to do. In your dreams, you mean, right? <laughs> Good little fake. Pull it back yeah. and dunk on the guy. Yeah, but the basket was only six feet tall then. Well, it's still a dunk, though. <laughs> Foul was called on Chris Williams. That's his second, the team's sixth. We've told you about the number, 1-800-INSURED. That's Insure One, the insurance superstore. If you would like to save on your insurance, are you tired of tackling those high insurance premiums? Well, tomorrow, tackle the solution. 1-800-INSURED. Start saving money right away. Insure One. Out of bounds. Ball goes over. Fenwick gets it back. I just think, Bill, it's kind of strange that you play all year with two officials and then you have to have three on the regional sectional and super sections when you get down to the state. I, I wonder what the reasoning is. If you got two most of the season, you think you could have the two guys to do the job on the playoff games also. Yeah, but this is the game of the week, Bob. That's why. Well, I know they're in practicing. They're getting practicing for the state tournament, but I don't know yeah. if it's necessary to in high school to go to a three-man crew. Well, he, uh, I'm not a referee. That happens to be my opinion. Yeah, but, you know, when we're around, they, they try to do it extra well. Great drive to the hoop by Courtney Bell, and he has four points. And it's a 25-22 to 22 ball game. 4.22 remaining, first half of play. Don't forget, at the half, we'll be going back to the WCFC TV Channel 38 studios and Jeff Beck, who will bring us up to date on all the other activity. McGinney scores the basket, and he was fouled. Perry shows his versatility, catches the ball at the top of the key and just does a real nice pump fake, gets his man up in the air. Let's see if we got that one on replay, Bill, because you see several moves here. He catches the ball and scores up to the bucket. Then he gives a nice pump fake to free himself, puts it on the ground. He, not only does he go straight up, he kind of leans into the target, double pump. Beautiful offensive move. This guy can hang in the air for about two or three seconds before he releases that ball. Try for the three-point play. He gets it. He has a nine-point half. Going, Maggetti came in at 24 and a half points a game here tonight. Lead is up to six, largest lead of the game. The Groves has his pocket picked. He was trying to bail out on it. Here's Maggetti again, driving, and he runs out of room. Look at Corey Maggetti coming right at you from our end zone camera. Well, you won't get any better shots of a game than I think we'll have here tonight. You can really see the game coming at you. It's a very tight quarters. You take a look at uh, head coach John Quinn. Does such a great job here at Fenwick. Long jumper, Maggetti. Overfired on it. Fed out by Eddie Harvey. Here's Groves on the drive. Didn't get it. And it's a run out on the drive. Maggetti! Unbelievable! 11 points for Maggetti. Overpowering. I think the mistake here is got to give Maggetti a little bit of room there instead of coming way out like Harvey did and picking him up at half court. He's got tremendous explosive ability. Lay back on him and don't give him that first long stride to the basket. That puts the bonus on. Maggetti missed on the three-point attempt in the 
Rebound comes out of there. Lead is up to eight now. As the bonus goes into effect on the drive, missed shot, the rebound, Bohannon, uh, uh, Bo Hennick puts it up and in, he has six points. That was a very important uh, basket. What makes McGetty such a great ball player, Bill, is ball handling ability. At six foot six, he handles the ball like a 5'10 guard. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Tie ball, jump ball now as they'll go ahead. And uh, we want to remind you, of course, to stick with us. You want to find out what's going on on all the scores from around our area. Jeff Beck is standing by. He'll have it for you in just a few moments. Live halftime show coming from our studios of Channel 38. This is the place where you can get fully updated on the games taking place tonight. Where else in the city of Chicago can you get it instantaneously and fully right here? That's where you get it. Rebound after the miss, and Bohenik had his pocket pick, went out of bounds. Bohenik will uh, get it back. I think that De La Salle has to play Bohenik a lot tonight because of the height advantage of Fenwick, and he's played pretty well. Well, I think he's kept him in the game. He's done a good job at both ends of the floor. He sure has. Tulin, or excuse me, uh, Nervin Groves on the attack. Grant feeds it over. Bohenik, ball taken away. Here's McGetty. Look out! A look on that dunk, Bill. He's mixing up his dunk shots very well tonight. <laughs> He's showing us a variety of slams. <laughs> that was swell, a fella. We'll give him a Ganella shot for that one. Three-pointer on the way didn't go. That was a two-loaf slam. <laughs> it sure was. Oh, that, that was like Ganella bread and a, a good, uh, good, a real great-tasting hamburger between two slabs of Ganella bread, brother. And it don't get any better than that. Out of bounds. <laughs> oh, man. Eight points is the lead. Very critical point right here before halftime. De La Salle can't let it slip away. They've got to hang within six or eight here going into the locker room at halftime. 2.16 remaining. There you have a good look at the time remaining. First half of play. Deep in the second quarter here. This has been a high-tempo game. Chris Williams. Jabari Harris leaning in. Overshoots it. A great rebound there. Good just solid rebounding position on the breakout. What a reverse put up and in by Courtney Bell. He has six. Or excuse me, that was Henry Grant rather who has four. Grant went the reverse underneath and cuts it to a six-point ball game. Now screening foul it looked like underneath Jabari Harris, number 40. Or no, they didn't give it to Harris. It was uh Looked like uh, Gilmore, Quentin Gilmore, maybe, who got it. I think it was Harris, Bill. I think he uh, got a little over, over accented his, uh, his screen on the baseline there. You're right, indeed. And the bonus goes into effect here, Bob. At 145, sure enough, you got it right. We see a couple of substitutions here coming into the lineup now. As Stevens is back in, uh, Stephen Walker, number 14. Both of these teams are very quick. De La Salle is very effective in their transition game because most, especially when they got all their small guys in there, they can all handle the ball. So when you're coming down the floor after a missed shot, it's like you've got five guards fast breaking on you. They can all pass and dribble the ball. Well, I'll tell you, you won't see any quicker team than this De La Salle team. They've, they've got it. They've got quickness, plenty of it. And whoa, Bella goes flying in there. There is no room on these sidelines, literally. I mean, you're going into the stands to go get a ball. Well, we said standing room only. He can't go into the bleachers and sit down there. Bell had a <laughs> stand when he fell into the bleachers. Oh, yeah. No place for him to sit. Yeah. Now, what a phenomenal Except atmosphere. Except on somebody's lap there. Yeah, you're right. What a phenomenal atmosphere for the game. McGetty misfires on it. Rebound. Jump ball. And this one will go to De La Salle at a minute 29 in the half. And there's our announced position, Bob. And right in front of Mr. Uh, Bohinek here is going to toss it in. Yeah, we're right on the incline, Bill. We sure are. Best We've got seats the best. in the house. I was going to say, we do have the best seats in the house. And we're having a great, great time here. Long one. Bohinek oh. went in and out. He's got a nice touch. But not this time. It didn't drop for him. Fenwick across the timeline. Jabari Harris. The ball. He dribbled it off of his knee. And then Shannon hit the end line. 
Say, are you participating in our new blue bag promotion here? It's actually a, a program that we have going in the city of Chicago that helps in our effort to recycle. Recycling is so important for the city. So all of you are invited to participate and keep that blue bag program going. Chicago's got it in the bag with the blue bag recycling program. 32 to 27, we're at one minute. De La Salle's going to kind of go into a delay offense here, Bill. Down five. They're going to take their chances and hope to hit a bucket at the end and go into the locker room only down two or three. It looks like they're in an all-out stall waiting for the last shot. I think they're in a good position. When you're on the road right here down five, you don't want to put the ball back in Fenwick's hands. So what De La Salle's do, the worst they can go in is down uh, five points here. If they hit this bucket, possibly two or three. Yeah. Groves with it. That's the guy they want the ball in his hands if possible. Good ball handler. Chris Williams is covering him right now. Bohannon. Back to Groves. They can hold. We have no shot clock now. About eight or nine seconds. Look for a design play. If they don't penetrate, possibly a design play called by the coach. Probably your best player, somebody like Harvey, is probably going to be the recipient of it. Tom White says get into it. Bell from the baseline. Didn't get it. Rebound fought for Fenwick on the outlet. I think we've said it time and time again on telecast this year, Bill, as we see it. Offensively, you don't want to take that last shot with five or six seconds left to go and give them an opportunity to fast break it. They were all in by the basket, got caught sleeping, a long pass. Jabari Harris released right away. There's the dunk right with great camera work there, Bill, with about one-tenth of a second left to go on the clock. Their timing cannot be any better than that, that's for sure. And we'll tell you about some great timing if you want to uh, improve your strength and want to check into something very, very good, the power of... Here's a little signature, Bob Hallberg, about what the first half was all about. Here's Corey Maggetti. Well, they've certainly had a high percentage of their dunk shots in the first half. Well, several slams, a couple by Jabari Harris and a couple nice ones by Maggetti. Yeah, that was a real rim wrecker right there. And so we have a 34-27 Fenwick lead at half. De La Salle's had its moments. They had an earlier lead of a couple of points. It's been tight most of the way, and that's where we stand here. Let's take a look at the first half statistics uh, and see how this shaped out. As you can see, not all that much different. Uh, De La Salle got the line a little more. The board, surprisingly, even the, the turnover, surprisingly. Bo both teams shooting very well. De La Salle, uh, well, not, not, not as good as Fenwick, naturally, yep. at 50%. But when you hit a, you know, when you get several dunks, it's going to bring your shooting percentage up, Bill. Yeah, right. You're sounding like a man who knows from firsthand experience. And that what it did wonders for yours, didn't it, Bob? Oh. Out of bounds. I think it was that pro vantage that I was taking. <laughs> <laughs> that combined with Ganella Bradfellow. <laughs> if that's what uh, Corey Maggetti's going to take, I'm going to start taking a double. Dose. There's still time for me to uh, dunk. <laughs> well, I'm getting that step ladder out right now. And I'll stand on it along with you. <laughs> All right, second half underway after the turnover. De La Salle has the ball on the attack. There, we switched ends now. Ball into traffic. McGetty got a hand on it. It's fed ahead and stolen back out of bounds. And it goes to Fenwick. The guard play, the guard matchups here between De La Salle and Fenwick's guard. You got four extremely quick players out there. Yes. We want to wish Fenwick well on their 12.1 million dollar capital campaign that they have going on. There was a block shot by Jabari Harris. Foul was called in there. And there will be shots uh, as uh, Jabari Harris is trying to go to the hoop. Well, Jabari has got the you know, defensive player by four or five inches to begin with. And the only thing you can do when you jump up on him is grab on like Courtney Bell did and try to stop him from getting the easy layup. Jabari Harris now with six points. Came in that as his average, so he has reached that. He is a late bloomer, but he is playing very well and very, very capable. Split on the foul shots. Chris Williams with a rebound. Oh, what a shot that he put in. He has a dozen. Chris Williams. Lead is a 10. Largest lead of the ball game. De La Salle on the attack. Chris Williams is there defending Bell on the drive and hits it from the baseline. Courtney Bell right up in his face. He has seven. That was the classic in-your-face jump shot. 
beautiful shot because he was going to his left and running out of room. He was almost out of bounds when he put that one up there. Yeah, and here is the drive by Mike Shannon. Ball taken out of his hands. The quickness of Sal on a run out stolen over the sideline. Tipped over by Quentin Gilmore. Out of bounds. Lead is at eight. We mentioned that Fenwick High School was built in 1929. This man, you've seen John Quinn, a graduate of Amherst College. They're take, undertaking a $12.1 million capital campaign here. We wish alumni Michael Quinlan of McDonald Corporation and Bernie Brennan of the Montgomery Ward Holding Company, we wish them well as the chairman of this campaign. Jump shot over the backboard and out of play. They have 1,100 students here, and they're going to be building this uh, capital campaign. Take a look at upstairs. This gym, it's a classic gym, but they're actually going to replace it. You take a look at the balcony. That overhangs the north end zone of the court, and they're going to be building a new 1,100-seat gymnasium here to replace this one. They're going to expand the library and add a 13-lane swimming pool as well as improve handicap access here. So it's really a great goal, and we wish them well in there. I miss all these old small gyms, Bill. They're, oh, yeah. they're so modern now. I like it when the fans are right on top of you, hanging from the balcony. It makes for great basketball atmosphere. After the common foul, running didn't go down. And another shot right near the basket by Shannon didn't go down. Jumper from the baseline. going to be getting a heck of a player in Chris Williams. On the drive, right down the middle, the ball stripped away from Marvin Groves, out of bounds. Marvin Groves is only 5'11", but boy, he has the Jets. A lot of players are playing with high octane out here tonight, Bob. Marvin Groves is extremely quick, Bill. He's a tremendous defensive player and so quick with the basketball. Deep release, inbound pass. Eddie Harvey comes up firing. Didn't get it. The rebound, Maggette throws it. What an outlet pass. Harris with eight. What a tremendous outlet pass. Timeout as the lead increases to 12 points. Bill, with that superior height, you can do exactly what Fenwick is doing in releasing a man on the shot. Plus, they're releasing their big man. They're releasing their center. Now, this is uh, Harris going down the court there. And how often do you take your 6'7 man on the shot, release him, and send him down for the dunk? But they can do that because even without him in there, they've got superior height at all positions. Well, you're right about that. And uh, let's go downstairs to Dan Richmond. Dan? Guys, after De La Salle just called a timeout, I looked over at Fenwick coach John Quinn, wondering what he was going to say to Corey Maggette after Maggette threw that beautiful pass to Jabari Harris for the slam dunk. Well, Quinn said the obvious. He just whispered, Two words, great pass, and it certainly was. Bill, back to you. All right, Dan, and Dan, my compliments on that tie tonight. I like the looks of that tie. It's very, very good. Hey, Jerry's Hockey Warehouse, Chicagoland's number one source for all good things in hockey. For the largest selection of skates and equipment, for team uniforms, for comprehensive equipment repair, and for the best skate sharpening, call Jerry's Hockey Warehouse, 708-597-1144 in Elsa, and at 847-584-0700 in Schaumburg. Take it from me, Jerry's Hockey Warehouse outlet is the source of all good things in hockey. It looks like these guys are on skates tonight, Bill, the way they're moving out there. Boy, they are moving awfully fast. Mid shot. Maggette climbs the ladder to get the rebound. Maggette rides with spaghetti, and it's every bit as good. Tulin out front. You like Sean Tulin. And on the drive, Maggette puts it up and in. Maggette, his first two points of the half, he has 15. And that lead is now up to 14, and Bell has his shot blocked, and he was fouled as he was trying to drive. One of the reasons uh, tonight, Bill, that Fenwick's got away with that long lob pass on the fast break is really you're playing against five guards almost on the floor for De La Salle. And when they penetrate to the basket, you have no guard really dropping back. Five De La Salle guys will get stuck around the basket. All Fenwick does is rebound and throw the long outlet pass. One of those guards has got to stay back. If the guy penetrates down from the top of the key, one of the wingmen got to swing up to the top and drop back and protect from him. We're getting caught with no guard back. 6-2, he plays the post. 
gets it in there. He has a nine-point game going. Very strong physical player. And boy, he'd better be going up against Jabari Harris tonight. And actually, they mix it up. Right now, he's defending out front. He's, he's on uh, Quentin Gilmore defensively. A little bit of a zone here now. A little bit of a 3-2 this time down the floor as they switch up. They haven't been very successful stopping him underneath. And it's working right now. But looks become a little tentative. Chris Williams, they get it into the post. Flip back for Shannon. Williams for three. Didn't get it. The rebound goes in for Quentin Gilmore. He has six. Got the rebound, the lead back at 14. Marvin Groves has his pocket picked and fouls. On the run out, he fouled McGinney. Groves with his third, team's third. I don't think Marvin Groves is used to coming up against defensive guards this year with the quickness of guys like Gilmore and Chris Williams. Elis yeah. Allison pretty much had the quickness of most games they're against when they're being guarded by different guards. But it's a great matchup out there because the defensive player is just as quick as uh, Marvin Groves is. Yeah, that's saying something, too, because Groves is very fast. Williams misses on the first one, but he knocks in the rebound, and he has 16. Chris Williams, largest lead of the game at 16 points. 47 to 31. And De La Salle in a world of hurt right now as Harvey pinned his ears back, went to the basket, and he will get to the line. Looks like big number 54, Mike Shannon, with his third. That's the team's second. See some substitutions here. Jabari Harris comes back in. I'll tell you, Fenwick has more frontline depth than they did last year, Bob. When we saw them at the end of the season. They look better to me. Well, I think it's been the improvement of their players. I mean, Mike Shannon is really playing well tonight, and Jabari Harris has improved so much since we saw him in the last year. He's really a ball player. He really is. You're right about that. He's improved tremendously. Missed both foul shots, did Eddie Harvey. We may not see him do that again all year. He came in averaging 85 from the foul line. Tulin delivering between two players. His pocket is picked on the drive. Harris will get to the line again. Tulin had to foul him. They will have to earn those. Well, here we see the quickness factor again by Harvey. Uh, takes the ball off of Doolin, and Doolin comes back and makes a good aggressive play back to stop him, but just fouls him on the shot. Harvey will shoot a pair here. And this time he delivers. He has eight points. De La Salle needs to have everything possible go right. The Meteors really need to knock down all their foul shots. They need to get some turn up. They can't be splitting foul shots or missing two in a row. Uh, you, it's too hard to score against Fenwick right now, Bill. You, that's why they call them free throws. You've got to take advantage of that and, and knock those down. You can't be missing those if you expect to stay in the ball game. Jamari Harris gets it back on the wing. He lost the ball. He took his eye off of it. Oh, and that, <laughs> that bothered John Quinn a little bit. He was not happy with that. He's going to make a change. He's grabbing somebody over there who happens to be sitting there. Okay, somebody get in the ball game. Get in there quick. He picks Mark Michelli off the bench. Yeah, that's who he wanted to bring him in. We'll see he's going to sit him down. Yeah, indeed, he has come into the game. McKelly seeing his first action here tonight. On the drive, Harvey. Foul. Chris Williams, it looked like, or McGetty. So, might have been McGetty who got it. I think so. That is his second. And the team's fourth. Well, we want to remind you that tonight's game is brought to us in part by Chicago's Blue Bag Recycling. Remember to do your part by recycling paper, cans, bottles, and plastic containers, and yard waste. And when it comes to recycling, Chicago's got it in the bag. And there are two points in the basket by Henry Graham, who now has six. And lead back up to 13. De La Salle cut into it a little bit. Chris Williams, McGetty, look at that power move! 17 for McGetty. You won't find too many 6'7 guys making that kind of a move. He's got the both hands, Bill. He can go left and right equally as quick there. Man, and if he's 6 feet 6, I'm 6 feet 6, and we know that's not right. Jump shot. Put it down. I think that was uh, Eddie Harvey who got it. He has 10. 
Harvey was behind a screen. We were screened on the play. <laughs> Foul call. The TV monitor screwed me on a couple of those, Bill. That's why I'm a little hesitant. To, plus, our cameraman's head is in the way of my there angle that go. time. So I'm really working hard to see all the action here. Yeah, and if I was 6'6", I would have no problem. <laughs> I'd be looking right over the monitor. There you go. Well, some of us were born in the under six foot category, Bob, and you and I qualify. We had to do it with our brains. Long jump shot. Tulin left it short. Fight for the rebound, and out come the Meteors, and a rather meteoric effort to keep the ball in bounds. In the fourth court, it's fed across. Good, strong drive to the basket for the shots coming up after the foul was committed. On uh, Sneed uh, Dedrick, who was driving to the basket. Well, part of the reason there's so much penetration tonight is the guards are going way out on the perimeter defensively to stop somebody. They're not given, neither team has given anybody a chance to shoot a jump shot. When you play that belly up type of defense where you're right up on top of the guy, you tell him, okay, I'm not going to let you shoot. If you're going to beat me, you're going to have to beat me with the drive. And that's why we're seeing so much on both teams go into the basket. It's the defense that's really causing that. They're extended so far out, you've got no other option. You don't have room to shoot it, so you put it on the floor and drive. One more. He is a 13. Bedrick gets it down. He splits the foul shots. Here's another guy shooting 80% from the foul line. They're splitting a lot of foul shots, and it's hurting De La Salle. They need to connect and hit those. Minute 36 left in the third quarter. Bill Hayes and Bob Hallberg are game of the week here on TV 38. Great to have you with us. Running into the gap, McKelly feeds it off to McGetty. Tries to come up firing and knocked out of bounds. I think Fenwick keeps it. We'll see some substitutions. Martin Groves will come back into the lineup. This game has been as good as the great taste of Ganella bread. The Ganella Baking Company bringing it your way. We bake the difference. It's 1886. It is Swella, fella, but it's spelled G-O-N-N-E-L-L-A. Ganella. And the jumper wouldn't go down. Look at McGetty getting the rebound. McGetty with 19. What hard board work right there. Man, did he get up there. We talked about his ability to go inside and outside. He can go inside, outside, and drive. He's just hard to guard. All underneath, a missed shot, the rebound. Dedrick had his shot blocked in there. The follow by uh, Henry Grant is good. He has eight. And that cuts it down to 12. It was a seven-point game at the half. Ball taken away. The Meteors have it back. Short the rebound and the foul called as Henry Grant got in there deep and stuck the ball up there. Boy, that's pretty well. He really did slam it against their Henry. So this is ruled. We'll see how they rule this. Shit, this isn't Horace Grant, is it out there, Phil? Uh -huh. At Man. six foot three, he plays about four or five inches taller than he is. Oh yeah. So sometimes heights can be deceiving. You know, you can say a guy's 6'3", but if he plays with the vertical of this guy, he's almost like a 6'6 player out there. Mm -hmm. Tremendous jumping ability. Grant got it in. Not sure who committed the foul. They have not posted a foul on the scoreboard here. the second one. McGetty is there to clean it off. For Fenwick, they have the ball back. And McGetty says, clear it out of here. I'll bring it up myself. McGetty into the fourth court. Now they go into a zone to counter any penetration on the last shot attempted. They're going to try to force him into an outside rather than let him come inside. Long lob pass underneath. McGetty ended up with the ball. Tried to go up with it. Stripped out of his hands. Over the end line. As Sean Tulin couldn't hold to it and we'll see a substitution they're going to get uh, Bohannik back in there put a big guy in so he can throw the ball long so Bohannik will handle that job Jabari Harris will be on him we'll see some kind of a screen in the long well I guess that isn't too long well they're not going to get anything done back there 
What in the world? They weren't even looking at the basket. And I thought they I thought they put him in to go, you know, long with three seconds left to go. I think they lost track of the clock there. Looked like at the end of the third quarter here from Fenwick High School, our score is Fenwick 51 and De La Salle. Four in the spotlight website. 51 to 40. Fourth quarter just underway. Bill Hazen, Bob Halberg reporting from Oak Park tonight. And standing room only here in the Fenwick gym. We have hundreds of people watching downstairs. And we want to say hello to them. Watching down in the basement on a uh, projection television. Let's go to Dan Richmond. Dan? Guys, late in the third quarter, Corey Maggette was wide open on the block a couple times, and the Fenwick players did not get him the ball. Maggette desperately wanted it on the block, and as I said earlier, did not get it. Expect Fenwick to go, go to Maggette down low on the block, and he wants to put this game away. Back to you. All right. Well, that's a pretty good game plan. You're never going to go wrong when you put the ball in Maggette's hands. We know that. Maggette goes up for it. Boy, Dan Richmond called that one, didn't he? Chris Williams in the rebound. McGinney has 21 points. Just overpowering underneath. 13 points the lead. And this is a good De La Salle team. With a 14-4 record, they came in tonight, 6-2 in the conference. They really need this game, and they're playing their hardest. On the drive, shot was deflected. Underneath, Bell, or Hart. Grant, rather, Henry Grant, on the lead, overled, too far in the pass for Quentin Gilmore. He would have needed a rocket, an afterburner, to catch up with that one. Out of bounds. Just want to remind all those officials out there again, Bill, on Thursday, February 19th, 7 o'clock, Marist, a free clinic. Learn how to officiate with two guys with you, three men crew out there that night. I don't know how to officiate by myself, yeah. let alone two other guys. Oh, you were the best critique of officials I saw. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, tries to pick it up. He lost the ball. The ball ran up his uh, knee. Listen, these fans rev it up and it is loud in here. Getty is wearing a wrist protector on uh, his left wrist. You might have seen a few moments ago we had a close-up of him and he was trying to kind of readjust that wrist protector. He's playing with it. Maybe wrist a little sore. Right down the middle. Great feed. And Henry Grant able to put it in. And he now has 11 points for the game. And that cuts it down to 11. De La Salle still in at the lob pass over Led. Great effort defensively by De La Salle to steal the ball away. Henry Grant double team tries to step through it. Harvey. Go. Nope. And Grant flying out of bounds trying to keep it alive. Well, that Henry Grant has to have as good of a vertical leap as anybody on the court. We take a look at that wrist protector that he has. Where's that? Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I think he heard that earlier in the year against the game at Carmelville, and he was questionable for tonight. Not a bad performance for a guy that was questionable. Well, you're right about that. It has, it has been anything but a questionable performance, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, I think a 10-second violation. or no, 20 second 20 time out. Timeout. You're right. They were just getting, you know, they're having trouble getting the ball across the timeline. Uh, the 10 seconds was almost up, and it was a smart play to call a timeout. Stop the violation from occurring. We'll remind you to keep an eye on this. Insure One, the insurance superstore. The insurance superstore saves you as much as 20%. Enjoy affordable payment options and receive instant coverage. Check the yellow pages or dial 1-800-INSURE. That's Insure One. 5.53 remaining in regulation. Don't forget, if you would like a copy of every game, Bob, we get requests from people who come up after the game and say, could I get a copy of this game? You bet you can. Just uh, dial this number, 312-988-9080. It's $25 for this game or any game in our series of prep games of the week. That's football and basketball, so be sure to order. There was a timeout. De La Salle came out in the zone that time, trying to mix it up a little bit, and Chris Williams took a long three-pointer in and out. There was a foul scramble on the rebound, and it's... Uh, Feed into the medium post area. On the back is Jabari Harris. Look out! Women and children, run for your lives! The big man 
is on the loose. Well, they have a tall, they have their tall lineup out there now. Three people in the front line, and Chris Williams just does an outstanding job of penetrating, spotting Jabari Harris coming along the baseline, and there's nothing De La Salle can do. He is about 10 inches higher than anybody on their team trying to defend him. Harris puts it in. He now has 11 points. He has almost doubled his average. We remember him wearing number 42 last year. He went to number 40, and he's played a lot better with it. Three-pointer by Bell as he knocks it down. That's ringing the bell for a dozen, and that's as good as the great taste of Ganella bread. Fella, that's swelling. Ball stolen away. De La Salle with it. It's Bell again. Missed the shot. Harvey didn't get it. The rebound, Grant. Two tracks at it for De La Salle. They got it down to 11, but they can't seem to get closer. They force another turnover. That time instead of dropping back on defense, De La Salle is pressing on the missed shots now. They're trying to create a couple more turnovers and make it more of an 84 football game. They didn't drop back. They came right at the rebound of a double team. There's John Quinn, he wants to hold on and get this victory tonight. They'd like to win their 17th game of the year against a single loss. It's an attacking, pressing team. And Fenwick has played so well. They're outscoring their opponents by 14 a game throughout the season. Jump shot up and in from the angle by Martez Davis. He now has four. Pretty good effort there by Martez. Drive by McGetty. Tip good. McGetty fighting for the rebound. Tremendous third effort there, Bill, keeping the ball alive. He's just got great athletic balance there. Misses the shot and still keeps attacking the board. Now you see him put a good move on. Go right in, miss the shot. Watch how quickly he gets back up on the first tip. Reaches over with the left hand. Comes in with the right hand. Grabs the ball, goes back up again and gets fouled on the play. Quick jumping ability, Bill. He's up and down extremely quick. Marvin Grove's got it, and I have that as being his uh, seventh. And the team's seventh. That puts the bonus in effect at 436 remaining. We'll see a uh, substitute here as Groves fouls out of the ball game. He did not score in this game. Came in averaging eight a game. So for Groves, it was a tough night against a very talented team. McGetty with 23. Approaching his average. And boy, he just has a way of keeping the ball alive. Mike, uh, Coach K, Coach Koshevsky is going to get a uh, really nice player at Duke. 24 points. Now, for McGetty. Ball taken away. Here's McGetty for two more. That time he shows us his defense. He gets right into the passing lane and picks the ball off, so he creates two points for himself on defense. Ball fought for as they were dribbling along the end line. Man, the pace of this game has been unbelievable. Just a lot of quick, great athletes out there. McGetty really does a nice job defensively of getting in and recognizing the pass coming and playing the passing lanes. See the tail end of that last deal there as he goes up and shows us his fifth variety of the slam dunk tonight. He's used them all, I think. Well, I'll tell you, the Fenwick team has given those rims a pretty good stress test between McGetty and Jabari Harris. They have get, they have thrown a lot of balls down through the hoop tonight. Well, that's the difference. De La Salle has to work so hard for everything. Every time they shoot, they got a hand in their face. They got a scrap on the boards, and so many of Fenwick's points have come off the transition and the dunk shot and the rebound dunk shot. You can't teach height and jumping ability. Yeah, that's one of the oldest stories in the game, and you know, Bob, because you coach many teams that were not the tallest. You know what the challenge is that Tom White faces in coaching a team like this tonight. They have a lot of talent, they're quick as can be. But the tremendous height and athletic ability of Fenwick has been a load, as it has been not just for De La Salle, but for everybody who has played them this year. They've been great. This team's going to be tough to beat, I'll tell you that right now. Well, now they're, they're playing a little, you know, they're not really trying to stall, Bill. If they get a good shot, a good back door, they'll take it. But they're going into their more conservative type of an offense where they're going to use the clock and get a good shot here. That's called the layup game, and McGetty goes... Offensive foul, wipe it off. That's his third. Offensive.
a foul on McGetty. Well, it's like you said, it's kind of based on a good shot and a good layup. I'm not so sure this was a uh, foul on McGetty there. I didn't think that uh, Kirk, uh, Bell had his legs planted. They're kind of slid in front of him. Yeah, it looks like Dedrick uh, had a little bit of a rake down on him, too. Bob is from that end zone view. Looked like he raked down on him. Drive in underneath. Ball was left short. Rebound fought for in traffic. Man, are they scrapping for it. Chris Williams comes out of there with it. And now they go right back into that, see if they can suck the defense out and get something on the back door. Chris Williams. Gregory, he's under pressure. Kind of a spread offense where you bring the defensive man high, and as soon as they get into the passing lane, you do a reverse pivot, leave him out at the top, and go back door on him. Little drive. They feed it off. Chris Williams gets two underneath on a great feed. 18 points for Chris Williams. He's having an awfully nice night. And quickly coming back the other way, Sneed Dedrick drops it in. Number 42, he now has three. Sneed Dedrick with three points for the night. And that lead remains at a dozen. Williams brings it across. Feeds it on the layup. Wouldn't go down on a left-handed shot attempt. Here comes De La Salle. can cut it to 10. Good move to the hoop. And put in by Stephen Walker. He now has five. Just when you think Fenwick's got to put away, Bill, they come back with two real quick baskets, and here comes the third. This time it's on the drive. Harvey puts it in. Eddie Harvey has a dozen. You know, you're always taking a risk when you try to deliberately change the tempo of a game. There's always a risk involved. Sometimes it backfires on you. And also, we, we talked about on the keys to the game, is De La Salle creating some points off their press? That's exactly what put them back in the ball game now. It's their defense that really has come back and given the six points in the last minute. They certainly have played awfully well. And we'll take a moment to remind you about something called Golf Illinois. 1998, the number one golf show in Chicago, Arlington International, February 20th through the 22nd. Everything for golf. The Golfer Show, test your swing, try the hottest clubs for major golf club manufacturers. And attention high school golf teams, Golf Illinois offers uh, a, a special two-for-one admission to all high school golf teams, 773-929-9711. Let's go to Dan on the side. Dan? Guys, these De La Salle Meteors are a stingy bunch. They won't go away, and one thing you can keep expecting Tom White's team to do is put the pressure on defensively. He's telling his team to keep pressing all the way. Well, you can't turn it the screws up too much more because, boy, they really have turned it up. McGetty across the timeline, showing his poise. Lost the ball! On the drive, Bell trying to slip in. Who's got it? McGetty and calls a timeout. Somehow, McGetty came out of there with the ball after the turnover, and a timeout was called. So maybe there will be a chance here to settle things down. Man, this has been an unbelievable tempo game. You know, Fenwick wants to slow it down now. They're in the driver's seat. They're in the position of leadership. But you know what? They can't do it right now. The game has a pace of its own, and it seems to want to go at that pace. We'll remind you, tonight's game is brought to us in part by Chicago's Blue Bag Recycling. Remember to do your part by recycling paper, cans, bottles, plastic containers, and yard waste. When it comes to recycling, Chicago's got it in the bag. Chicago's Blue Bag Recycling Program. You know it. All right. Score 63 to 55. Bob, you're exactly right, Bill. It's very hard to slow the ball down against a team that won't let you. They're so aggressive, you're going to make you shoot it, or they're going to get the turnover. They're not going to let you stand out there and hold the ball. Maggetti right to the hoop, and he drops it in, and that breaks a little drought. Well, yeah, you're right there. You had it with Tech in there. They got a little bit too conservative at times and got out of their game, which has been attacking them all night long, and yeah. it backfired on it for one or two minutes there. It sure didn't work very well, that's for sure. They had a one Dickens of a time. Long jump shot. For De La Salle, didn't go down. The rebound, great play in there to keep the ball alive for Martez Davis. As we say, he's one of the quietest players on the team, but when you least expect it, there he is. As well, we it's, saw. it's amazing how well they rebound for their size again. He gets, you know, again, the vertical leap. There you see the ball go over. Henry Grant goes over to the other side. And Cortez Davis just out hustles everybody, scrambles on the ball. Laura beats the big guy, Mike Shannon, for the loose ball and draws the foul. And now, Bill, as we've said all the game, you got to hit these free throws. With the clock stop down 10, you've got to knock them both down if you want a chance at winning this ball game. Boy, and Davis has now hit three in a row without a miss here. 
He's approaching his average, and these are crucial foul shots, crucial for the Meteors. As they try to claw back into this thing, time is now as much of a problem as they have, as much as a problem as Fenwick. And that's what Fenwick don't want to do with the clock stopped at 142. See somebody step up there and knock down two free throws. Fenwick, you want the clock moving. You don't want to be stopping it by fouling somebody. 65 to 57. Watch the long backdoor pass now. When a team puts this much pressure on you, sometimes you leave yourself a little vulnerable for the fast break. Chris Williams bumped as he went up the sideline. Fouled, no question about it. De Sneed Dedrick with his first. And uh, with that bonus in effect, that's the eighth team foul. Don't forget, Prep Weekly will begin at, on February the 6th, next Saturday, 10 p.m. Plus, Ganella's Friday conversation with Taylor Bell, a regular feature of the Prep Weekly, and that'll be a lot of fun. Jeff always uh, a good man with the puns and everything else, and he'll be with you next week, as usual. 19 points for Chris Williams. Bob, you could well be right. I think you are right in saying that there are potentially four Division I players on this Fenwick team. To beat them, you got to play just about near uh, perfect basketball. Yeah. Inbounds pass. It's uh, Harvey on the drive and almost put in a circus shot there. Drew the foul. And that stops the clock. See, this is going to be a long minute and a half at this pace, Bill. I think if you're Fenwick now, you lay back a little bit off them so they can't come right down and penetrate on you. By guarding them so tight and extending out your defense, you're allowing De La Salle to drive right around you to the hoop. And at this particular point, you want to put a little token pressure defense on them, make them use up some clock coming up the court. It only took seven seconds for them to get these two points back if he makes this free throw. Yeah, 13 points now for Harvey. He's approaching his average. One important thing, Bob, we have the mandatory two-shot foul in effect now. He missed on the second one, but the rebound came down. Across the timeline, the drive, hit, missed it, but McGetty didn't. McGetty has 30 points. Here's De La Salle, Eddie Harvey overshot it. Bell had the ball, couldn't put it down, or excuse me, Grant with it. Boy, the pressure, how, how hard can you turn up the screws? And that's what we're seeing right here. De La Salle is running for all they're worth. Well, when Fenwick gets that rebound, they're just double-teaming that ball and attacking him, and Tim Doolin had nowhere to go. He was trying to create a little room for himself by swinging the elbows a little bit. He lost the ball out of bounds. And so, if you take a look at Coach Tom White, product of Lewis University, with a fine coaching career here, and his man, Courtney Bell, will get to the foul line on a rakedown foul as he was trying to put the ball up off of the glass. Again, it's how much the defense are extended out. They're out so far, they allow the penetration. I don't think if I'm Jabari Harris at 6'8", I want to go way out to the perimeter and guard somebody like Courtney Bell, much smaller than me, 35 feet away from the basket, and allow him to drive around me. I want to back up a little bit and use my height to an advantage. 15 points now for Courtney Bell. He's had an awfully nice night. And he'll get a pair, he'll get one more here. This could cut it to seven. He gets it. Seven points. The game is not over. We have 57 seconds left. And I don't have to tell you going through the history of Illinois high school basketball, strange things can happen. Especially with the pace of this game, Bill. Oh, yeah. Gila pressing so hard, a couple turnovers. Good call. Chris Harris had no place to throw the ball. So a timeout was called. With 51 and 3 tenths seconds left in the game. Fenwick trying to nurse a seven point lead. 69 to 62. This game is not over yet. Remind you, Jerry's Hockey Warehouse, Chicago Land's number one source for all good things in hockey. Skate on over for the largest selection of skates and equipment for team uniforms, comprehensive equipment repair for the best skate sharpening. Call Jerry's Hockey Warehouse, 708-597-1144. That's in Elsip or 847-584-0700 in Schaumburg. Jerry's Hockey Warehouse is the source of all good things in hockey. You better believe it. Well, 
51 and 3 tenths seconds left, Bob. This game is not over. Well, it, it, De La Salle has proven time by time again they can put the points up there quickly, Bill. And that last time, Fenwick had a little trouble with the press because once they had the ball in bounds and Chris Williams had the ball, all his targets, all his teammates were running down to the other end of the floor. He had nobody to throw the ball with. They've got to keep a couple guys around the basketball to help them. Look at that. Look at them winding around on the stairway. Remember, we have hundreds of people who are watching this game down in the basement area on projection television. There isn't any room. And we want to say a special hello to those fans who've been watching and supporting Fenwick and supporting De La Salle in this game tonight. We're watching downstairs. Happy to have you with us. Here's Chris Williams trying to drive to the hoop. He'll get foul shots out of this. Bill, do you ever remember a ball game when there was just so much penetration no. to the basket and so little? Not, not a real lot of Ganella threes tonight, have you? <laughs> huh? Yeah. I mean, there hasn't been that many attempts no. for the three-point lane. No, you're right. We haven't seen a lot of great shooting in this game. Well, they haven't had to. They're so quick. They're just driving around each other to the basket. These happen to be two of the quickest teams that we've done so far this year in our broadcast. Yeah, yeah the tempo has been way up there. This has had a college-like tempo to it from the beginning, if not faster. Split on the foul shots. Davis gets the rebound. Here comes De La Salle. They'll pin it back. Long three on the way for Harvey. Didn't get it. McGetty with the rebound, and that may be the one that seals up the game. Tulin brings it across, and now they'll try to take a little bit of air out of it. Immediate foul there by Henry Grant. That's his third. And that puts on the two-shot foul. And 31 seven tenths seconds left. I don't know if you noticed on that last three bill Jabari Harris that time did exactly what we're talking about as Harvey came down he backed up on him as soon as he went up for the jump shot he used his height and approached him and made him shoot over his arms pain. You're a big guy you don't want to continue chasing those little guards all over the perimeter that was a oh, good yeah. defensive stop at that time. Would you believe this guy Tulin hasn't scored tonight that's his first point right there. He's a quarterback. He distributes the ball. Yeah. He, and that's all they've needed tonight. <laughs> Long passes. Touchdown. Special smile from you saying that. I know that's the role that you played as a player. Long jumper. That's a three-pointer for Eddie Harvey. And he's not going down without a fight. 16 points for Eddie Harvey. Timeout immediately. We still, with a six-point ball game, this is not over. We're two threes away with 20 seconds left to go, and these teams can score quick. The key here now during the timeout is for Fenwick to hold the basketball. I'm sure Coach Quinn is telling him, protect the basketball, don't give it up. Yes. On the other hand, look for De La Salle to foul very quickly in order to put Fenwick on the free throw line. And we want to tell you very quickly, the insurance superstore is Insure One. Are you tired of tackling those high insurance premiums? Tomorrow morning, do something about it. Dial list number 1-800-INSURED and start saving money right away. That's 1-800-INSURED for Insure One. Bill Hayes and Bob Hallberg, happy to have you with us tonight from Fenwick High School, standing room only. And they're standing in the aisles. They're standing on the entryways. They're all over the they're place. They're standing today. outside. Oh, they are indeed. The most important thing here is getting the ball in bounds now for Fenwick. You don't want to turn over the watch for Fenwick to go long with a touchdown pass. I think De La Salle's ready for it. Well, let's see. We had a foul. Little hold, little hold there. Yes, indeed. And it looked like it was against Harvey. And that's his second. That was a backdoor cut. They were going to throw the home run ball there, Bob, I think. I don't think yeah, it was uh, Grant who got it. Excuse me, his fourth, not Harvey. Went against uh, Grant. Now you, very important here for Jabari to hit the free throws. De La Salle look for them to come down with a set play and get the tree up quick. Boy, Jabari Harris is drilling him, isn't he? He has a dozen. He's not known as that good of a foul shooter, but boy, tonight he's been uh, he's been a little bit better. Now if I'm Fenwick, I want to kind of stand in front of him, a little token defense, and don't let him go running right past me. You want him, you want Fenwick, or you want De La Salle rather, to use up about seven or eight, nine seconds before they can get a shot off. You don't want him to come down and shoot the ball up there in a quick two seconds, three seconds. Harvey, up she goes. Left it short, the rebound to Quentin Gilmore. Fouled immediately, trying to get the ball back. Stephen Walker has his second. That should just about do it, Bill. Yeah, that should. As we'll have foul shots coming up. We want to give special thanks to 
Dean LaSalle, Brother Mike Quirk, the president, Mr. James Gay, principal, Terry Earhart. We had a chance to talk with him this morning, the athletic director at Fenwick, Reverend Daniel Davis, principal, Mr. James Quaid, and Michael Curtin, the athletic director. Thank you for making the telecast possible here tonight. Gilmore with seven now as he puts in the first one. Missed on the second. Rebound taken out of there. Slips out of bounds. Eight and a half seconds left here. The lead is at nine. De La Salle has the ball back. Well, you certainly don't want to foul anybody here. No. Just, just lay back and let him take the shot. Long jumper doesn't go by Bell. The rebound. Sneed Dedrick was knocked out of his hand, or rather, uh, Martez Davis, rather, excuse me. With nine tenths of a second left, Fenwick is going to win it here. All they have to do, the ball's put inbounds, and uh, Davis lets it go, and it's a victory for Fenwick as they improve their record to 17 and 1, winning here by a score of 74 to 65. A very, very impressive fourth quarter performance, and it was a strange, strange fourth quarter. De La Scal scored 25 points in the fourth quarter and yet could not overcome the tremendous effort of Fenwick here, which they didn't match it, but they had 23 points of their own. It was that high pace of a game. Let's go downstairs to Dan Richmond. Dan? We're joined by Fenwick's Corey Maggette. Corey, outstanding job tonight. You really came alive in the second quarter. What do you attribute this to? Uh, just working hard on the boards, uh, getting the rebounds. Every rebound I got, you know, it was an open shot for me. My teammates helped me out a whole lot, and that's how we got the win out here. Corey, as good as you guys played, these De La Salle Meteors were very stingy. They would not go away. Yeah, they came out here. They played us real hard. We kind of slacked off a little bit. That's why they got back in the game. We just had to keep playing hard because they was coming after us. They played a real tough game. Corey, last question. Do you see the team improving week in, week out? Yeah, our, our, our post players, Jafari Harris, Mike Shannon, everybody's working hard. You know, we're going to play hard. Good. good luck to you and the rest of the Fenwick Friars this season. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Bill and Jim. All right, thank you very much, Dan. And, uh, boy, that's Dan hustling right out there to get one of the stars of the game. Certainly, Corey McGetty finished with 30 points. Our final score, Fenwick 74, De La Salle 65. Bob and I will be coming back here courtside in Oak Park in a moment. That's the thing about Brown's. It tastes better. If Brown's chicken is what you crave, now's the time to come get and save. Right now, for just $8.99, enjoy eight big pieces of crispy Brown's chicken in any large side order. Try one of our new ones, like Caesar salad, broccoli and cheese, green spinach, or hot cinnamon apples. Mm-hmm, <laughs> just $8.99. That's the thing about Brown's. It tastes better. At home with Sparky's Spots. Hey, Marion, what brings you here? Well, dear, space heaters need space. They create a hot spot in your home. Keep all heaters at least three feet away from anything that can burn. Even pets. And when you leave the room or go to bed, turn it off. Now our home can be safe and warm. Happy days are here again. <laughs> this is Sparky the Fire Dog. Make your home a safe spot. Learn not to burn. Well, you are taking a look at the Fenwick High School Gymnasium where they had an absolute sellout crowd. They were hanging from the rafters tonight to watch Fenwick in their victory, 74-265. Man, that was a very, very nice win, Bob. Nobody could get disappointed here tonight, Bill. We saw some great athleticism, some quickness on the floor, and just a real good, played, well-played basketball you game. You bet you're our Browns chicken and pasta player of the game, Corey Maggetti, who finished with a total of 30, was just sensational. Did it all and did it very well. And you can see him driving to the hoop for two of his 30 points, and there was another rim record. He had a couple of down balls like that. Just absolutely sensational slams, and it showed the capabilities that uh, Corey McGetty certainly does have. Very nice job. Just played a great all-around basketball game, Bill. Inside and outside, rebounding and ball handling. The pace of this game was sensational. What really something special to watch. And we want to remind you that this telecast, any retransmission or rebroadcast of our telecast without the express written consent of cost broadcast sales is strictly prohibited. Copyright. 
1998 Cost Broadcast Sales Incorporated. Well, our final score was 74 to 65. We certainly hope that you enjoyed our telecast tonight. I had a lot of fun. I'm out of breath. I don't know about you. Great game. The gym was <laughs> smoking hot in here oh, today. Oh, boy, I'll say it was a lot of fun. We hope that you enjoyed it, too. Speaking for Bob Hallberg, Bill Hazen on behalf of our TV38 Cost Broadcast Sales crew saying so long from Oak Park for tonight.